Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Crown Unfiltered, the internet's premier car design podcast. This week we have a very interesting young lady on the show called Lucia Lee. Lucia was born in the US to Korean parents, spent the first 10 years of life there, then the following 10 years back in Korea, and then after that relocated again to the west coast of the US and eventually settled in Germany. She has studied in all three of those countries and eventually graduated from the prestigious Fortime University where her master thesis project, which was an Audi, sent shockwaves through the industry, quite literally. And uh, Audi naturally slapped her up and she has been with the company ever since, which I think was more than five years ago. She has... um, is still obviously still in her um, infancy in her career but she has already done a lot and uh, she has contributed to the Audi AI Me concept the e-tron GT and the Audi Acon concept as well as a couple of other things Um, her main message to people male female and whatever other genders we have these days is that your int- your own story is the most interesting one and you should tell it authentically and be unashamedly yourself enjoy um where are you i'm at my living room <laughs> <laughs> chilling in- and and your living room is in Ingolstadt or Munich? Ingolstadt. Okay. And what is Ingolstadt like to live in? It's very small. Yeah. It's very pretty. Yes. The main the main street and the city center. Yes. It almost looks like a lovely colorful Disney movie yes. set. And Big part of it is, of course, Audi. But I, I hope the city center is a little bit bigger. It's not big enough for me, actually. But for living and for residence area, as a residence area, it's very safe and very easy. Nothing much to worry about for your daily life. And how long exactly does it take to get into the center of Munich? One hour, exactly one hour. hour. And I guess there are a lot of people commuting, right? Yeah, really a lot of people commuting. Was that ever an option for you? Yeah, because I'm I'm more of a city person. I love big cities. Yes. I really wanted to live in Munich, but the dilemma was this driving time. I have to wake up one hour earlier than how I am doing now. Yes. I couldn't give up this one more hour sleeping <laughs> <laughs> in the morning. And you've you've oh. been in you've been in Ingolstadt the whole time. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Since my internship. Cool. Just just one time move. Now we are now I'm in a new apartment since last February. Yeah. Before I was living more closer to the city center. Okay. But now I'm living in a new apartment. Cool. Awesome. Any pets? Ah, oh, sadly not. Why? I would love to have well, what, a lot of pets. What would you like? A cat? Cats, dogs, bunnies? Cats, dogs, and bunnies. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to. Wow. That would be chaos. Yeah. <laughs> Lucia, let's, you've had a very colorful background growing up. Do you want to tell, tell us a little bit about where you grew up or where you were born? Mm-hmm. So I simplified it a little okay. bit. And um, so I was born in Virginia yes. and mostly East Coast, Virginia, 
New York, not the New York City, New York State. Upstate. And uh, no, it's it's like four hours away from the New York City. It's called Ithaca. It's a small college town, but it's still in the New York State. Okay. But it's four hours away from the NYC. Okay. So mostly, mostly over there. So the earliest 10 years were in the States. And the next 10 years, I grew up in South Korea. Wow. And now I'm living here in Germany for like seven years, I think. Germany is catching up now. So you were born, you were born in, you were born in Virginia and your mm-hmm. parents, I'm presuming, did they speak Korean to you? Yeah, all the time. But you were obviously exposed to English, you know, from a very young age. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kindergarten, elementary school, a little bit of middle school, a little bit of college. And what did what was it like like get, going going to Korea at the age of seven? Did you feel at home, or was that was it was it a big change? It was a big change. It was really really a big change. My mom told me the first thing I said to her when I arrived in Korea, because there's a lot of apartment complexes over there. The first thing I said it was, it feels a little bit choked. Choked? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And is it massive? No, no, like, because uh, so, you you went to you lived in Seoul, is that right? Yeah, and it's all the time. and what it, I, I have no idea what that city's like. Is it is it crazy big or is it does it feel kind of manageable? Like Munich, Munich doesn't feel like a big city. You know, it, it feels like a bunch of cozy neighborhoods kind of mixed together. Like I guess mm-hmm. Seoul's a lot different to that. Seoul is not so big. You can reach anywhere from the middle of middle of Seoul to the other end of the Seoul in 30 minutes maximum with car, 20 minutes, even 10 minutes. You can reach everywhere 10, 15 minutes if there's no traffic. But it's crazy crowded. Is it? It's insanely crazy crowded. Is that something that you ever get used to? Because I can't handle that stuff. That's... Also, why I'm not a big city person. Like we could, oh. we could be living in Berlin, but I'm. It's too much. I, I I need to turn off from that stuff. I like to dip in and dip out, but I'm not. I can't be doing that shit all the time. Okay. What about you? It's sometimes it's annoying, but I can handle okay. it. Okay. I got used to it. I learned how to do it. And now. It's not so bad. And now, do you miss it? Yeah. 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 I think it's more fun for me. Wow. So, can you tell me a little bit about your, apart from all the crazy moving around, so you born in born in Virginia, grew up in New York, went to Korea at seven, back to California in, I don't know, a few years later. And um, where along that path did you decide... I want to be a car designer. Let me just grab one water. In South Korea already, I decided to go into that direction because in our bachelor's, first year we, we do the industrial design altogether. And from from the second year, we have to select either to go to go into the direction of product design or transportation design or interior design, which is like environmental okay. design. And over there, I already selected transportation design because I was product design and the pr- transportation design was my top two favorites. But I selected the transportation design because of those glamorous and emotional surfaces were fascinating me more than the product design. Then, then at, after finishing my third year in South Korea, then I took a year off 
Then I went to art center to experience this famous school, how they do, how they teach, how the students are working. And after experiencing one semester in art center and one semester in Cornell University in Ithaca, where I grew up, New York State, then I came back to South Korea, then I finished my bachelor's studies. Then I moved on to my master's degree in Germany. But tell me before you before you get onto that, how did you how did you decide that I wanted to study car design in the first place? I mean, did you you <sighs> never had the did you did you started university in in Korea? Did you initially intend to study car design? Did you know that was a thing or did you discover it at university? I I had no idea about car design. So what was what what were you planning? Was there a plan beforehand or? No, actually, my mom saw a Korean drama. There was a car designer in this TV series, and she was telling me, "Hey, there's such a design department, car design." Then I was like, "Eh, really? Okay, sounds complicated. <laughs> but sounds attractive. <laughs> but sounds attractive." Because cars looks amazing, they look beautiful, oh, but it sounds difficult. My dad was also very against it because he wanted me to more go into the direction which majority of female students are, like like more product design or, or environmental design. But there was actually one very big example which inspired me big time. It was one of our senior, senior lady in our school in South Korea. She did her graduation project. Yeah. It's a concept car. Imagine you have a car from a brand Chanel. Okay, cool. And this was viral. This went viral on YouTube. She made this concept and posted on YouTube. It was I think it was two, 2009, so way before when YouTube was famous or the social media was not even there. So she posted this and it was really viral and that really hit my head hard. Oh my God, this kind of way women can really do car design if you come up with super unexpected concept or anything which men cannot come up with, fashion brand and a car brand merging together, I had no idea this was possible and this really awakened me. Then I fell into that direction right ah, away. So it was that collaboration thing that you in, in initially drew you in. Yeah. Wow, cool. Awesome. So that and 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 then you start so when did you start studying? Was it two thousand and nine? 2008 2008 bachelors okay and initially you were you were going to go in as a you were looking at product design or environmental design yeah i i couldn't really decide before this event happened cool and um i guess you must have been a creative kid right before yeah, I was always drawing. What sort of stuff were you drawing? Mostly animals, especially dinosaurs. Really? Do yeah. you have any of those dinosaur pictures still? In my home in South Korea, my parents have a bunch of them. They have like a booklet of my dinosaur drawings, but not here in Germany. When did you stop drawing dinosaurs? I think elementary school. But no cars at all at that stage? No. But my dad was drawing a lot of cars and showing to oh, me. Oh, really? Was he? Yeah. And yet when you decided to become a car designer, he was like, this here is not a good idea. Don't do it. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what does he think now? He's super proud of me. Awesome. Are you, uh, do you have any brothers or sisters? 
Yeah. I have one brother and one sister, and both of them are younger than yeah. me. My brother is three years younger than me. My sister is 10 years younger than me. And are they also creative? The sister is creative. What does she do? The brother is more the, more the mom's side. My sister is, she loves drawing and she has talents, but she is doing this Korean traditional music instrument, which is called hegum. It's like a small violin. If you, violins, you do it like yes. this, but if you flip the body side lower, it has three strings and you do it like this. Oh, like a cello. Yeah, but very small. Small cello. Not so big. Yeah, mini cello. Mini cello. Yeah. And she's playing this cello or is she designing them? She's playing this Hegum. Okay, Hegum. 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 Cool, I learned something today. I'm going to write that down and check it out. Hegum. Yeah. Hegum. Hegum. She graduated today. Oh, congratulations. What, what, what's her name? Sojong. Sorry, say that again. Uh, Claire is, it's her American Claire name. Claire is her American Gamecock. name. Congratulations, Claire. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so, Lucia, when you, when you discovered the, the, the car design thing at university, was, was um, adapting your drawing style, was that, was that difficult? Can you tell me a little bit about that transition? Because presumably you were drawing other things and the automotive sketching is something a bit different mm -hmm. oh, in my case it was really difficult because in korea already from the first year they gave us a lots of assignments to make professional sketches like anything animal or people or products or a scenery and this was really difficult for me because already the amount was so much and I always never got a good grade on this. And after this, also also when we had this detailed departments, when I moved into the transportation design, sketching cars was not easy. It was very difficult. It was not easy. I had to train myself hard. What and uh, what did that look like? What does training your training yourself hard look like? I found the perspectives which I'm comfortable with. The thing which was making my life really more difficult was myself trying to do the sketches, which having like a really high eye view, more difficult perspectives. I didn't know it was okay to not show every perspective. I found out if you have certain perspectives you're comfortable with, then you can just show your design with those selected certain perspectives. And the proportions also, I had to learn a lot. Can I just say that I think that that is a very good, um, it's the first time somebody's ever said that. And I thought about this, it took me a long time to work that out, but I think that is actually very good advice. Because for me personally, I got really stuck with, you know, they teach you how to do perspectives, you know, like vanishing points and, and three point perspectives and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, if you are setting up cubes, that's okay. But if you are doing that constantly with a, a, a complex form like a car and you're doing it all the time, like constantly looking for a new view every single time. I think hmm. for, for me anyway, I got, I got completely bogged down with trying to get the perspective right every single time. And that actually, you know, it, it made me not want to draw actually. It was one of the things that, that, that made me a lot more comfortable with just becoming a modeler, you know, because I was like, well, I can control this tool much better and I'm, well, by nature, a 3D person, I, I mean, that's where my strength lies. But that advice with regard to picking a few perspectives that you're comfortable with and learning those, I think that that's a very useful thing, that your energy is, is spent in 
developing the theme within that perspective, not about putting your energy into getting the perspective right. I mean, I, that's, I, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that would, would say that, oh, that's not the proper way to do it, or that's not a good thing to do. But I think it's a very productive thing to do if you're struggling anyway. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. I also had no idea before coming to company. I learned it from company. And that's the thing. When you get inside, you realize that actually a lot of people do that, you know. I, I mean, like, and, and they're, they're, I mean, maybe a lot of people also just stick to side views and, 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 and front and rear, you know. It's, it's uh, but, yeah, I guess. I love side views. Huh? Side views are great. I love side, side views. Side views are great. Yeah. I mean, and side views are important, right? I mean, I think side views are highly, highly underrated because... This, the smallest tweak to the roof line or the bonnet or the fenders can have such a change in character to the whole car. And I think that getting the side view right is absolutely imperative to, to starting a car. I mean, you, you, build with the, you start building a car from the body side, right? Anyway. And I think side views are, side views are highly, it's highly underrated. Plan views as well. Plan views and side views and plan views. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh, definitely. So, so, but who gave you, did, was that something you just worked out yourself? That I'm just going to pick these few perspectives and, and get comfortable with those. Was that like a, a hack? At school? At school, I didn't, I didn't mean it, but I just had to do it because I didn't like the extreme perspective sketches of mine. Then at company, I found out a lot of senior designers doing it and it looks great. It's good enough. You don't have to show every perspective. So I was happy to see this. Okay, so that, so that was like a, a thing that was born out of necessity for you. And when you got it, when you finally got a real, when you finally got inside a design studio, you realize that everybody else is doing it, and it's okay. Not not everyone, but some some good ones are also doing it, so it's okay. Okay, cool. And what about what about rendering? Was that something that you that you had to work out yourself, or did you get help from from school? I had to work out by myself. In, in Hongik University, the Korean university I went, my bachelor's, there was no course like this come to teach us how to do the Photoshop renderings or manual renderings. So I was really struggling big time. And I saw in art center, a uh, lots of students doing this manual renderings for their assignments, assignments. And I was shocked how rich they look with the value change and value change and the color change yeah and photoshops also i think they have this viscom classes teaching photoshops but in full time also we maybe in bachelors they have but in the master's course we didn't have it so i just kind of developed myself i with the lightweight more in the direction of the lightweight rendering more breathable Photoshop sketches to show the form clearly. And that's it. I didn't really uh, focus on this art center style, painting all the environments with the car, with the digital painting, entertainment design style. This I was never into, but instead I developed myself to have this vi visualization with the V-Red or Autodesk showcase ah. to have build up my quick model, show rough model, then do the rendering and show the scenario with this rather than painting everything with the car. That also makes a lot of sense. Showcase, old school, huh? And are you using a lot of 3D yourself? Yeah. Was that also something self-taught? Yeah, it was really, really pain in the ass. But now I'm good at it. We started to learn alias at 2009, second year in the university in Korea. 
It was so complicated. It took 10 years for me to get this program, Alias, Autodesk Alias. For me, it took 10 years to master this. <laughs> it was really difficult. It was very complicated. What was the teaching like? It's a very long time ago. I think we built some simple products. But I don't think it was easy to understand in the first glance. I think you just have to do it by yourself and spend a lot of time and do it again and again and again and figure out. I cannot tell any other better answer than just doing it as much as possible and struggling as much as possible. All the struggling actually was very helpful at the end. All the struggling was worth it. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's just, it's as much, I mean, learning the program is one thing, which is very, very unintuitive. It's not obvious what you need to do. Like, there's no real logic. I mean, in to me, it's logic now, but learning, using a program for the first time, it's not logic. And um, mm. and I think that, that also it's uh, it's learning about form more than anything else you know learning to control lines controlling volumes sections proportion and and then of course somehow you've got to weave all that together yeah and and the funny thing is after mastering alias the other programs i learned it easier i don't know why what other things do you use? For example, like Maya or Blender. Maybe the alias is the most complicated program. Are you using Maya and Blender now? Sometimes. Just for, for what? Quick quick ideas? or For sketch, yeah. If I have a topic on it and if I have the package, then I try to build a rough model out of it to check how is it looking on 3D. And if the result is good, then I can deliver this to the okay. modeler. And why would you use one over the other? Like, why would you use Maya over Blender or the other way around? Do you have a preference? Yeah, I definitely have a preference. For the moment, Blender is really the thing. Blender... The order how I learned was Alias first, then Maya, then Blender is the most recent one I learned, but Maya was also pretty complicated. The interface was still very complicated for me to find the menus. But Blender, I feel like there was fewer menus that we have to use compared to Maya. It was much more easier for me to learn, more intuitive, and the result was also coming out with a better quality compared to Maya. That's amazing. It's absolutely amazing because that program was never, I mean, it's in the last, I, I think three, maybe five years, but probably more like three years, that programs really got a lot more sophisticated. And as you know, mm -hmm. it's being accepted. I mean, it's, it's, it's not is being accepted. It is accepted in, I mean, as far as I know, almost every studio in the world, you know, which... I think 10 years ago, they would have laughed at you if you had uh, fired up this open source program inside a, a studio. Yes, I cannot believe this is for free. It's crazy. I wonder why. There is no, no advertisement cost like YouTube for them, right? For the developers. No. Of I mean, I know I, I, I've... There's a... The founder, the, 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 the guy that's, that started Blender, he's a Dutch guy, I believe. And I listened to an interview with him and he's mental. I mean, he's, he's crazy. He's, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a very, very smart guy. But he wanted something that was always, he never, I mean, I'm sure he had money anyway. So he didn't need money and he didn't want to make money out of this program. And he wanted it always to be open source. But I understand, I don't know if, if this is correct, but I think that if it's used in a professional setting, 
that if, like for a company for example and oems using it i think they need to pay something but obviously it's nowhere near what like what what you have to pay for autodesk for example you know alias like the crazy prices that you have to pay for that but lucia what i um, how did you how did you learn blender was it the standard donut tutorial yeah the blender guru blender guru blender blender, blender guru. guru i think yes yes the donut yes of course youtube nowadays youtube have everything it's yeah it's you can learn anything from YouTube. And like, did you, is, does he have like, I, I've only seen the donut tutorial, but I know he does, a, he's done a lot. Like what, what, um, what sort of tutorials is he, did you learn of his? Was it just that? And then you worked out how to sculpt a car or does he have a whole series of things that you have to learn? For the big volumes, this donut tutorial was good enough. Okay. But for the detail works, I had to ask my colleagues or get some advice from my manager and had to really try out a lot. This was not easy to figure out the details and defining. And have you, have you done, have you done much clay work? Clay work, uh, not so much. Bachelor thesis, Icon show car, Amy show car, and on the little bit more on the other projects, which was not released. And do you enjoy working with Clay? Um, I think I prefer CAD. Yeah? You yeah. don't, and, and so like looking off, like developing a Clay model with a bunch of modelers is you not really into it it's fun i i really learn a lot from the clay modelers also they are really professionals and they're willing to help me if i'm struggling with something but sometimes is a very simple answer <laughs> but sometimes you know i'm i'm not the tallest person <laughs> so <laughs> like reaching reaching the higher area and doing the physical it's it's a little bit exhausting for me okay. if i have to do it whole day okay. even the little stuff takes a longer time for me so but but in terms of in t in terms of um like working as a designer i'm not talking about actually you uh, modeling yourself but working as a designer on like a a full scale clay with a team of modelers you, is that you, you do you find that enjoyable or would you rather not do that no i like i liked being with the okay. clay modelers okay it was so different compared to the designers area because they always not always but it was really happy to see they have the music on and chilling and more the energy was different than sitting on the desk Yeah, there's a lot of a lot, a lot of characters in the in the clay the clay studio. Yeah, and I felt very comfortable to talk to them. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a shame that 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 that, that there isn't going to be more of that. I mean, I think I don't th exactly. It's, it's super sad. I mean, there's this constant ongoing debate about, you know, is clay dead? Uh, and 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 I think I mean, it's never dead. Of course, like the, it it always offers something really valuable to to the project, and it's also a really enjoyable collaborative process, especially with a lot of those guys and their amount of knowledge and skill and the craftsmanship is like you just can't beat it. Um, but the reality is, you know, it's it's. Uh, Companies want it bigger, faster, stronger, and uh, quicker. Quicker. And, and this is this is the this is the issue, you know. This is really sad. This is really sad for me too. One of the most heartbreaking comment I heard from one of our angel clay modeler, clay modeler, was he said, 
there's not so much to do anymore. It, the bo the job is more boring than before because computer is doing more and they just do little changes. Yeah. yeah. Compared to back in the days. Well, I think that that back in the day they had a lot more to do with finding the theme. You know, they they were doing a lot of the stuff that that we do as as concept modelers, you know, digital concept modelers. Interpretation of the sketch. Exactly, yeah. Which is obviously that's that's I mean it can be fucking frustrating, but it's also it's also <laughs> where the most fun is, right? Where you you come up yeah. with like solutions and transitions for um you know the as you said the interpretation of the sketch. Um and it's yeah, I guess it 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 probably is sad. Yeah, I think it's definitely sad to not to have less involvement in that. Yeah, it's really really sad. I mean, I can't imagine this. This was obviously before my my time, but like, can you imagine back in the day where they were literally like there was a a foam block and they would clay up the foam block. And then they would have to, they would literally, there would be no rough cut or anything like that. They would literally start scraping away from the, from the very beginning. Like they would do everything even at like one to one scale. Can you imagine how, I mean, it must have been amazing to watch. Yeah. Yeah, it's really sad. No, sorry, I, I, ah. <laughs> I it's okay. I, I <laughs> thought I thought no, it's okay. Um and Lucia, can you can you tell me a little bit about your, your experience going to Fort Sound? Like what what are some of the, the the key things that you learned there? Uh before going to this I want to tell you the reason I selected. Ah, Fort okay, Sound. yes. I um, because Germany is obviously the hometown of cars and also the sweetest thing is the tuition fee was free wow even even for foreign students mm -hmm. wow can you believe it I couldn't believe it during the whole study that's crazy this is really the awesome thing of Germany the education costs but even though it's for free the the teachers and the faculties levels are top yeah yeah and they really have a good connection with the companies the german oems a majority of alumni are from that school i think in the german companies so they also always had this teachers from mercedes coming at evening to give us feedback about the projects and the sketches this was also incredible to really get the real feedback real honest critical feedbacks from the professionals it was really really difficult sometimes but it was very helpful there's a, because they're really there's honest. a guy called i want to say um someone ferguson who's apparently what? M mark Featherson. mark Featherson, yes Ferguson. I heard about that That's guy. Ferguson. It sounds very similar. Uh, yes, really? no, I heard about him. I heard about him from, uh, um, who was it? Uh, Ivan Shmatov, the uh. sell Porsche to buy Porsche guy. And he was saying he hated him in the beginning. And now, they like, and now they're like super, super big friends. But he said like he hated him in the beginning because he would literally come in there and he would say like, whose bullshit is this? He's like, yeah. and he said to him, like, exactly. if you don't get better by next week, I'm fuck you done. You've got to go. Was he brutal? You're out of here. Yes, definitely. I was so, so scared of him in the beginning. He already has this aura. Very, very, I don't know, very confident and very healthy force. Yes. He has this aura and he's just honest. He just doesn't filter it. I think it's hurting on the first glance, but it's very helpful. On the beginning, I think I was not his favorite student, but when I 
was almost graduating and looking for internship, I got a lot of compliments, so I was very, very happy. If you know, if you get a compliment from someone who was not complimenting on you from the beginning, then the happiness is doubling up. I'm with you. So how was he how was he towards you in the beginning? He didn't really comment <laughs> <laughs> but he pointed out some in interesting stuffs but it was getting better and better as time goes by okay. as time went by did you ever feel like out of your depth at at fort sign out, out depth. of your depth means yes. like um when if if you you look around you and you think like shit i i'm not good enough to be in this place right now and uh i need uh no. okay i never felt this because this is also one of the very good point i want to tell you the the teachers the instructors there are really observing you specifically and really how they really know how to motivate you it doesn't matter if you're a good student or a bad student. They they know how to motivate the the non best not non good not so good students yeah. and they know how to handle the good students to for them to not be too arrogant or flying around and offending other students, for example. So even though I was not the best one, I was always full motivated. It was just so fun to do the assignments because the instructors were so ca so much caring. They just invite us like real family. They're so heartful and so warm and really taking care of you with their hearts. This was total full power, full, uh, totally powering up my motivation. Cool. And the and your your peers? Can you? Talk, tell me a little bit about them at the time like the other people in your class like did you was there was everybody on a on a kind of a similar level i don't think so they were not in a similar level but everyone was so different and everyone was coming from such a different background or country so diverse i think that was also the secret which nobody really felt like excluded or compared or unmotivated wow i didn't really feel that i think the instructors were picking out the best out of the students you know seeing the potential and really guiding them and picking the right sketches for them which has this peculiar characteristics yeah. and helping them to develop this I, you know I hear so many different things about Fort time and I think like I always I've got a my my perception of it now is that I mean from from what I've heard is that there isn't um I, I guess that the, the 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 bachelor program is different to the master's program but the on the so. master's program you not they're not showing you how to draw. It's kind of expected that uh -huh. you already know how to do that. And I guess if your level is not there, then you have somebody like Mark Featherston saying, get your shit together or don't bother coming back. But it's clear that there's a lot of um, stuff that they are interested in with regard to thinking. And I think that um, they purposefully take a mixed bag of people from different um, environments. Like, you know, I'm sure you were a very interesting candidate for, I mean, I, I didn't, I obviously didn't see your, your, your portfolio that you applied to university with, but I'm sure your background, given, you know, moving all over the world, that this was of particular interest in, to them. I think so. And for me, it was also really interesting to see other students from so many different backgrounds with different thoughts and different opinions and 
different colors of their characteristics. It was one of the most fun part. Everyone was just so funny. Who? In a good do way. You, how many people were in your class? It, it is a very small class. In my semester, I think my semester was one of the biggest semester. I think there was eight people. Eight, seven, okay. eight, nine, wow. nine, something like this. Not four. four oh, are you f are you friends with any of them now? Yeah. yeah. I love them. Do you do you? Do we you, don't talk so often. But do you remember? Yeah. It, like, who do you? Can you mention some of them? Who yeah. are they? The other other girl uh, in our class. Let's say there was eight students. Yes. I think it was eight students, and two of us were girls. And she was Chi She was a Chinese lady, and she was so funny. Yeah. She was so cute and so lovely. I was just so happy to see another woman in my yeah. class. And she she was so nice. She always invited me for a hot pot or a dinner. And she she's such a good cook. She she cooks a lot. So I always came out from our from her apartment with my stomach filled up like crazy. And and I think she is now working as an interior design director in human horizon somewhere in china okay after teaching and working in some other companies volvo geely i think so what what's the name lee wen lee wen okay no i don't i don't lee know wen. her i don't know her and and there's another interesting classmate his name is Samir Sadiq. Yes. Uh, he was in the, I know I know him. I mean I don't know him but I know I know who he is. He's famous. Yes, he is. He's he's Instagram famous. Yes. He was also such a crazy character because he was already pretty professional when he came to the master's yeah. course. I think he already worked in Lamborghini. Then he came to the master's okay. course. And he was already famous, so all the students were like scared of him and like, like looking at his work and what's he's doing, how is he presenting? So interested, and he was of course he was one of the hot shots in the class. It was so crazy to see the way how he presents already, so professional, all the powerpoints so cleaned up and so well developed and analyzed, even showing the marketing aspects of his product, and. The good thing was he was also very honest, giving a very honest opinions to other students, which I find also very helpful. Of course, there were a lot of, not a lot, some of the students didn't like, but I think at the end it was helpful. And he really had a clear opinion about a lot of stuff. And he and his enthusiasm about cars and racings and and some some motorsports was incredible. Yeah, he's a proper a proper petrol head, so to speak. Mm -hmm, as I, I understand so. it, I mean, at least that's that's the perception that I get. You know, he's clearly a big fan of racing. He, yeah. So. On the on the subject of presenting, is that something that they taught you at all at at university? The way of talking they taught us the presentation skills. So, verbal. so what sort of things? What sort of things are they teaching you with regard to that? How to how to make the point more simple? How to make your posture? How to glance? How to make the tone? How are they, What are they saying about no. glancing? What are they saying about glancing? When whenever I got nervous, <laughs> I was like looking at down or the, the the teacher John. I still remember his name. He was like, "Look at me, Lucia. Look at me." <laughs> no, no, <laughs> just right away instructing, very clearly and very honest. And 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 some of the other things, tone. What are they saying about tone? Say it louder. Louder. Yeah. For me, I don't know in other students' <laughs> case, but for me, 
Say it louder. And and what and what um what sort of things are they talking about with regard to uh simplifying the message? Like what are they is there is there anything special there or is it just get to the point? I think he also kind of estimated the time when we gave him the presentation if it's too long he tells us to reduce it down and telling us which was unnecessary and which was good you have to emphasize this topic more and get rid of this other stuff which was actually a third wheel of the presentation do you remember what sort of stuff they were telling you to get rid of like what is what is unnecessary to try and like provide some value to somebody that is still learning and they want to they want to do a they want to present their own project like what are some of the things that are irrelevant in a presentation it's really difficult to remember but if i if i recall a little bit especially the intro i think in my case i had a long intro to talk about the the concept not diving in right away after one or two sentences i think i was trying to explain longer so giving so you in the so is uh, when you say when you say intro you 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 giving too much information on um statistics about the need for whatever it is that you're going to design and the environment and the people and the demographic are you are you talking about stuff like that or like these things just drawn out too much is that what you're talking yeah. about this plus and i think i was always trying to tell that in this project we were assigned to do this and this and that so so like like the unnecessary stuffs I'm with you. It makes sense. I, you know what? I, you see a lot of that stuff in in uh, in portfolios as well, particularly on LinkedIn. Like people, st and I think we've all been guilty of doing that, especially as students, where you see somebody post a portfolio online, and there's five pages of research on their on their on their project that. It's like, dude, you've got to get rid of that because nobody's going to look past it. And especially now, right? It's totally irrelevant. And I think that even the most sophisticated design director, they still want to be uh, seduced by beautiful images. Mm. Yeah. And it was actually really okay to go to the point right away. This is also a big thing I learned in Germany. Yeah, I think it's a German thing as well, right? Get yeah. to your point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took long for me to learn. I still have <laughs> was okay. I still have a real problem doing that. I still I still really struggle with that. I've got I I've 9 times out of 10 I've got too much information in my head. And I'm constantly trying to sift through like what's important, what's irrelevant, what's secondary. And in doing so, I end up like changing the order. It's probably like my attention deficit disorders more than anything. But I, I as a result, I, I struggle to, to make a point sometimes. So I, it's, it's, a, it's a life struggle that I'm working on all the time. So you can imagine if, 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 if you take that into account and then also the fact that my German's pretty terrible, um, the locals don't always, you know, enjoy talking or communicating with me. They think I'm a bit mental. <laughs> How is your German, it's by terrible. the way? It's terrible. It's really bad. I... I and it's embarrassing as well because we've been here for a while. We've, I mean, we've been here since 2015, full-time, pretty much. No, full-time <laughs> since 2016. So this is like, it's going on, it's been, 
yeah, it's going on six years now that we've been here full time, and um, and on top of that, I've, my grandparents are are German. They're real Germans, and and uh, yeah, really? she and my your grandparents are yeah, German. They, they, yeah, and my grandmother thinks I'm an idiot because I can't speak German. <laughs> <laughs> she literally says to me, she goes, she goes, uh, she starts talking to me in German, and she goes, yeah, I forgot you're stupid. You can't speak German. <laughs> But she's also getting old. She's also oh. getting old now as well. She's she she's kind of like, um, she'll start talking to you in English, and then like halfway through a sentence, she'll just switch into German, and she'll like and and you look at her and like I don't fucking understand. Can you? And she's looking at you as if like what's what's wrong with you, and then <coughs> you can go to the supermarket with her, and she'll start talking. She'll bump into somebody that she knows. And she'll start talking English to them, and German to me, and she and people. Are, yeah. Anyway, so that's unfair. Yeah, so she she's getting a bit mixed up. She's but she's not. Yeah, she's. She is. Um, I mean, she's yeah late eighties. So I guess that that's what happens. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But. Wow, but it's good that she speaks English. Yeah, well, they lived in South Africa for a long time. I mean, my parents were, my mom and her siblings were all born in, in South Africa. So they lived there mm. for a long time. So they could, uh, yeah, they, I mean, they learned English over there. But my, my, yeah, my grandfather's a bit of a linguist. He can, like, I don't know, he talks, I mean, English, English, uh, German, obviously, Afrikaans and uh, and French and Spanish and fucking all sorts. So it's it's very impressive. Crazy. Yeah, it's pretty mad. Pretty mad. What's your German like? Like Changlish. Changlish, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm in a pretty similar status like you. It's really a shame, but... I can order my food, I can order my drink, I can do simple, super basic sentences, I can do my groceries, but if it's going into a little bit more complicated topic or more advanced sentences, then I'm lost. But you've also got that thing where everybody at work communicates in English, right? And even the meetings and everything are in English. Yeah. But you're not at the stage where you can negotiate the position of an A-pillar with an engineer in German. No. This needs a little bit more okay. time. Just a little bit more time. Are you? Do you guys get like um, lessons and stuff at work? Before Corona, we had some. And during the Corona period, it was a little bit tricky to get the budget. But now I, I got the information that we can start again, which is a very, very good news for me. But is this going to be online or what? I don't know. But doesn't matter for me. Online is also good. I need to find an online German teacher. If there's anyone listening, I'm looking for a good online German teacher. Oh, I can send you some because I heard some recommendations yeah? from my colleagues. Great. Please, please, please hit me up. I will too. Awesome. Um... So, Lucia, you uh, do you ever hook up with like any of the other girls in in uh, any like any other brands and stuff like that? I mean, in in Munich, for example. Mhm. Mm I met I met Anne Anne Fortuna and Christine wow. Christine Zurian one time. This was incredible, but it happened before Corona and, and uh, after Corona, it was difficult to make it yeah. again, make it happen yeah. again. But this was really one of the best experience I ever had. It was just so sensa sensational to see this, this ladies in Rio in front of yes. me. Yes. I loved it. <laughs> where did you, where did you, where did you guys do anything or did you just met up for, for beers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just for oh, okay, cool. In, in, in Munich. Yeah, I haven't I haven't met Christine in person, but I kind of feel like I know her pretty well. Like we, we've got a mutual love for the film Step Brothers. Have you seen this? 
Mm-hmm. It's the fucking best film on the planet. You've got to watch it. Step, bro- Step, Step Brothers. Brothers. You have to watch it. Down. It will change your life. It's, it's it's on Netflix. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, unfortunately not. Um, I mean, it might be. You need to check. But it's a, it's it's. I mean, it's it's not it's not a new film. It's been out for like a while now. It's like eight, nine, maybe even ten years old. But I promise you, it's fucking great. It's so good. It's with with Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, and uh, basically they are a pair of forty-year-old kids that have just never grown up and their parents their, their mom and dad hook up and they become stepbrothers and they both hate each other at first but then they become best friends and it's just uh, it's amazing you've got to watch it it's so funny I promise you, you, you like I I've never really been a, a big Will Ferrell fan like I just never ever really got it um, like he's really well known specifically for Anchorman and I it just never really did anything for me, but my God, I can't I, I can't tell you how many times I watched Step Brothers. I love that film. And Christine Christine loves that film as well. So if you watch it, you'll be able to exchange quotes with her because she she's really into it. You got it you gotta get on it. And you guys found this out in the podcast that this was <laughs> your, your I think movie? I think we found out afterwards. I, I, yeah, I, I can't remember how we found out, but it was after the podcast, but, um, but, oh, but after. yeah, but we both, we both love that film. So yeah, you've got to, you've got to watch it. It's going to take, it's going to take your, your friendship with her to another level. Promise you. Oh, <laughs> thanks for the good Yeah, tip. but she, she's, she's a lot of fun. Anna's also awesome as well, but I only, I literally, uh, I met Anna when, um, right at the start, when we started the podcast, we went down to Munich and uh, I thought I was going to f- record every single episode in person. And I let- I think we recorded, I don't know, those first few, we recorded like six episodes in two days or something, or maybe even more, it was seven episodes. It was ridiculous. Really? Yeah, no, actually, I'm telling you, I, no, it wasn't. It was, it, was a, it was a lot. It was like, seven or eight maybe in two days it was crazy i w- i thought i was going to have a nervous oh breakdown God. at the end of it because i couldn't i couldn't concentrate like it was it was too much for me so um but i i literally i i met I, yeah i met anna we did the we did the um the podcast and then we chatted for like maybe half an hour afterwards and then and then that's it i haven't i haven't really spoke to her since but um I haven't met Christine in person, but we've chatted quite a lot online. And as I said to you, we, we have this, uh, yeah, it, connection. This, this connection with Step Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing. It's 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 really it's a really fucked up sense of humor. But it's great. It's it's great. Uh, uh, you have to watch it. I will. Thank you. Do you do? Uh, what are you into? Like what? films do you like sci-fi's horror movies thrillers rom-com is it true that like i i heard like i don't know if it's asian asian uh uh horror ho- like horror films uh specifically but um it might be japanese but apparently like the 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 um the violence in those films over there in Asia is like it's on another level. Like it's it's Western films are pretty tame in comparison. I think it's more spiritual. Really? More more yeah. How's more psychological, spiritual. Something like for example, like the grudge. Do you know the movie Grudge? Ring The Ring, yes. I know that, that that's Ring. a fucked up film. That's crazy shit um that's not f- this is so different yeah hmm? it's so this is so different with the western stuffs really do we do we tame things down a lot do we tone it down uh, i don't know i think in in my head the western horror films are more of a blood or tearing ah, you down okay. or slicing it's like a physical you. thing 
yeah more physical and the asian stuffs were more psychologic that you are so sur suppressed by something else and you still have this in your mind and this is still there even though you're dead and you have to you have to have someone else to solve this and and the and the how do you say this Gr grotesque aesthetics yes. are a little bit different it's more 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 awkward it's creatively awkward like the, like the how the bodies are twisting oh, Jesus. And the weird movements they're creating this crazy sounds which is totally matching perfectly with this weird movements i think it's more into the details so you and that's that's your kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why but I like it. I like it's interesting to see. And that. and sci-fi stuff, what sort of are you into all sci-fi or is it like very specific stuff? Um my boyfriend is a really really a big fan of Star Wars. Yeah. But I found out I am not so much into this older sci-fis. I prefer the visuals of the late, later ones of Star Wars, like the Mandalorians or, yeah, Mandalorians or what is the other one? Boba, Boba Fett, the newer series. Yeah. But I don't know why I'm not so appealed on those kind of stuffs. But I like. Ah, there's this the stormtrooper in the background. There's a stormtrooper yeah, behind it's you. Actually, there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's R two D two. What's the gold guy called? I never know what his name is because I'm not. I'm probably also one of the first, one of the only people on the planet that I've not really watched Star Wars. I think I've watched, I think when I was eight, one of my homeboys was uh, into Return of the Jedi. And that's all I, 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 I swear, to, that's all I've ever watched is that. I, I just can't. I'm glad to hear I, this. But I, I, I just don't get it. Like I kind of get, I, I don't know, I, I get lost. I just, it's, it's difficult for me, me to too. relate. I, I just... I'm like, oh, great, you know, you're flying your your spaceship through a black hole, like fucking. I it, it's it's not for me. I I've and I, I've, I've tried. Like the the new things are really interesting because obviously, like from a design aspect, aspect the costumes are amazing. Like the stormtrooper mm -hmm. is just such a cool thing, but to get me to sit through three hours of that shit, I'm like. Uh, it's not for me. It's not for me. Me too. I want to love it, but it's. I difficult. know. I I feel like that as well. I want to love it. I want. I am give. I give it my energy, but doesn't do anything for me. I mean, to be fair, it's not entirely. I haven't really actually sat down with any of the new stuff. Maybe I should, but there's just too many things that I just. If you want to take sci-fi specifically, like I have to. It has to be like the Matrix. The Matrix, the first one, mm. amazing. Like it was like, I, uh, as a, somebody that doesn't like sci-fi, I sat down and I like I, I at the end of it, it, it really fucked with me. I was like, Jesus, maybe, maybe this shit's real. You know, you you re it really makes you think. And it was like it was almost like it's just warping reality a little bit, but. If you want to talk about flying spaceships and uh, fighting each other with with torches that slice you open and and uh, um, I don't know I like it's just it's too far removed for me I think you know for me to 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 get into it and um, like the same with I mean it's not the same thing it's it's fantasy but like Lord of the Rings again I really want to enjoy it because I don't doubt it's brilliant. I know it's good, but fuck me. I mean, I've tried to watch it so many times and I just, I swear, like every time without fail, I fall asleep. Like I just, you know, I, and I want, I really want to watch it, I, but I, I can't. It, it just, it, it does. I even, it's I even, I even, well, yeah, but oh, may, maybe, yes. I think it, yes, it is. But I, I just, I think it's about, like I don't care you know almost it's it's uh it's difficult to make me I think you've got to you've got to identify with the uh, the plot or the people you've got to like somehow 
be involved in that in that world and i i can't get into that world because i guess it's so far removed from reality what about something like avatar i really enjoyed that this is yeah, okay right yeah really i okay, right? i did and i was super surprised by it but i but i did really enjoy that but that was the last like the last film that is that 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 i've probably watched that i have been able to appreciate that is not in my normal uh genre of of things to to enjoy but that was really good yeah that was great what uh, what else can you recommend tomorrowland tomorrowland what is that i think it's in the disney plus okay it's more the recent stuffs i think you can watch it with your little ones. okay it was not so difficult to understand okay. but the visuals were interesting the future city they draw okay. a little bit more cuter version of avatar of the oblivion. Oh, oblivion. oblivion maybe yeah what sort of sci-fi stuff do you normally like like what is your are you into like alien versus predator and that kind of shit more more also the black mirror stuff i love oh wow okay yeah i have I, I also everybody else was watching that and i i i, I okay I, I, I it's not that i couldn't get into it i just haven't sat down and watched it but i i need i, I probably short. should yes and they say as well that with black mirror there's kind of um you can watch any episode and it's like each there isn't like an ongoing storyline you can each one is 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 unique right mm -hmm. very short and very unique okay interesting future scenarios okay. a little bit brutal but and what about um where like what's what sort of stuff do you look at for inspiration this year in your work um, oh, there's so many things it can actually be everything i try to make my brain always stimulated by seeing the stuffs i've never seen and changing my environments constantly I, I love seeing other cities, new cities, wherever I, I've, I've never been, or, or some contemporary arts, museums, galleries. Is it sounding too basic? <laughs> no. Nature also, I love seeing nature. Seeing nature, yeah. And do, do you think that that informs your work? I think yeah. so. Just like subconsciously mm -hmm, subconsciously i cannot really explain how this works but i think it's really really working subconsciously your brain is absorbing everything and it's spitting it out when you need it merged together with the stuffs you see you have it on your monitor because i always have something on my monitor when i try to sketch and what as an inspiration and what about um and le okay so let's talk for a second about going into like the galleries that you've that you that you mentioned are you do you ever take like something quite literal from a ga uh, from a gallery and try and inco try and sketch that in an automotive form or is it also just kind of taking you away from the everyday routine of 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 cars and and looking at something fresh and somehow it it seeps in subconsciously i think it's the latter one keeping my brain alive and awake it's more the latter one i think to implement something in an automotive way is more the architectures i think architectures or furniture designs not so much about contemporary arts or maybe it's the method how they merge the opposite 
stuffs together this method which I see on the contemporary art I can implement it in automotive way you know what I a mean? little bit yes but I think it's more the stimulation on my brain which I'm into do you make like a conscious effort to go to galleries and and that sort of thing regularly yeah definitely I do are there any decent things locally or do you have to go into Munich Munich you're going to Munich yeah. You're going a, a Engelstadt, not so no. much. Yeah. And you uh, are you going? Do you go in quite frequently? I used to. Last year, I really went yeah. a lot. And in the winter holidays in the states, I went to Lakma and Moma. Was wow. also amazing cool. to see. And after coming back from holidays since this year started, not not okay. yet cool well Lucia I think we probably need to to wrap up um, do you have any advice for the young people out there wanting to become a car designer especially for a woman no well it can be for women I didn't want to jump into a cliche but it can be for women absolutely because I prepared the answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go for it. Go, do it. Let's do it. I have a lot of stuff to okay. say. The first thing is, um, I get a lot of questions about this male industry. Car design is a very male dominant industry. And I often get asked if you don't feel intimidated or offended by the majority of the male people and what I really wanted to tell the girls who wants to do transportation design is actually what I felt is a lot a lot of times those intimidations or offended feeling was pretty much all misunderstandings and what I found out is actually no one wants to intimidate you. They are really nicer than you think. And if you have anything, just nobody wants to intimidate you. They're, they really, if you just simply ask for it, then they are very willing to help you or advise you or... And and just in case if there is someone being mean or offensive to you do not take anything personal it's really the matter of that person who is being mean it's not your problem at all and i myself also had to really train to not take anything personally in the beginning when i was super naive i was taking everything personally but now i'm totally good with it and And don't think about other people too much. Careless, ladies, careless. And the second point I want to tell is the authenticity. Really be yourself. You always, you, yeah, in the society or in the company, you always have to compromise. You cannot be just me, 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 of course. But don't lose yourself by pretending to be one of, one of them or one of others. If companies or school selects you, you are in that position because of the way how you are and because of the stuffs you achieved. So you have to be really confident about yourself. Don't get affected about any other negative stuffs. And also in design, I think especially ladies, I think you have to have a different way of approaching it, like like the Chanel car, for example. I think it would have been more difficult for a male student to come up with this idea. You really have to come up with a clear idea, or clever idea, or with the with the meaningful logic. 
like analyzing future scenarios or searching for some logics of successful iconic product designs or yeah and your own story is really the most interesting thing and and the last thing which was also very important for me is of course the companionship with other woman this is so necessary sam oh, this was this was really helpful for me because yeah first um especially in exterior design department if you don't have any options to build up this woman companionship it doesn't have to be your department it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be your company you it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where try to find a nice group of women where you can share your your woman topics in my case i get a lot of empowering female energy from my girls hip hop dance course or meeting up with women colleagues from other departments this is the stuff which i want to tell them and one interesting thing i want to tell you is when I was studying my bachelor's in South Korea, I actually never felt like being a woman in car design was such a special thing because in in my semester there was there were 30 students and half of them were females. Oh wow. Can you believe That's awesome. It? That's great. It was it was like really half half, half women and half men. And I think the reason in this case is because South Korea doesn't relatively doesn't really have a long history about car culture. I think that's why nobody is really questioning if woman is doing car design. Wow. In Europe or in the States, in Art Center I also saw only I was doing the transportation design from my class. And this long history of car culture is building up the image that car design is a men thing. interesting that's that that yeah that's really interesting what i just last question on 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 korea south korea specifically like the the pictures i mean the images and the videos that i've seen of seoul specifically is like very it's it's like a different world almost and i i um i i wonder like how how um is it very has it always been very open-minded or is that only a recent thing because it seems like it's a very forward-thinking progressive environment i mean especially with what you're saying now I, I but i could have that completely wrong but um it seems like they're kind of ahead of the curve in some respects compared to compared to where where we are but is that is that the case or I think the culture itself is not the most modern okay. I see a lot of time the culture's culture is a little bit conservative but I think people the spirit of South Korean people is super passionate and they are really working their ass off they are really really hard working people and what I what I feel is, I think genetically, they also have a lot of talents. <laughs> and because recently also Netflix, South Koreans are hitting, hitting it quite big. Netflix, Squid Netflix Game. and chill. Yeah, Netflix and chill. Did you see Squid Game? No, again, I'm probably one no. of the, okay. So I'm just going to put a disclaimer out there. I haven't seen Squid Game. I haven't seen uh, uh, Black Mirror. I haven't seen Star Wars. I haven't seen Game of Thrones either. So I'm, again, like, I'm probably also, I don't know anybody else who hasn't seen Game of Thrones. That was, like, such a hot topic for a few years, actually, and I just, I haven't seen it. So, no, I haven't seen Squid Game. But you, did you hear that this was super popular all over the world? In Netflix? Yes, I did. I did. I did. But I've also come to realize that in life, especially with me, because my brain is so... I don't know. I've got to, I've, I've got, I, I, I can't put it into words for you. But I generally 
I want to sometimes get into what the main, like most people enjoy. I just can't. I, I don't know. I like, I like music documentaries and, um, yeah, I don't know. And I like Step Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Step Brothers is my assignment and the Squid Game is your assignment. Okay, I'll, I'll watch, I'll watch Squid Game. Squid Game, uh, yeah, okay. But not in front of no, the no, kids. No, 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 but no, not no, in, not in. But you need to choose now. Is it Squid Game or Black Mirror? Which one? Which one has got the bigger, the bigger chance of, of a non-sci-fi person, um, becoming a a convert this is difficult in the transportation design aspect i would say black mirror okay so i've got a better chance of enjoying black mirror you think but one question are you enjoying seeing a lot of blood are oh that also kind of freaks me out is there a lot of blood you don't like it no but I, no but not really no you can just tell no. me it's okay. I will not. I will not be disappointed if no. you tell me you don't no. like it. No, I don't. I'm open-minded. Okay. Then, then Black Mirror. Then don't do Squid okay. Game. Okay. Black Mirror. Okay. Definitely. I'll. I'll. Okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. So I've got Black Mirror, and you've got uh, Step Brothers. Step Brothers. Okay. <laughs> Step okay. Brothers. Yes. All right, Lucia, it's been an absolute pleasure and um, I I thoroughly enjoyed it and I it was it was Me a too. pleasure to meet you. I I really want to tell you one yes. thing, Sam. I really really appreciate your channel because I get to meet so many designers from your podcast especially in this corona times which I which is relatively more difficult to get to know new people. It's it's really a surprising amount of podcasts podcasts you're producing and I really love it. Thank you, Lucy. I I, I really I really appreciate it.